can type stuff in and hit return, it should open the, uh, the MacComp window. So this is the main bit here, which says MacComp GUI. Don't worry so much about these other two bits here. You, you may have other things that appear here. It doesn't really matter because we're going to override it in a second. So um, hopefully everyone is looking at something that looks like this. Can I see the chat now? Maybe I can see the chat now. Oh, no, I can't. Somebody says it works, Kyle. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes. Brilliant. Excellent. Yes. Okay. So um, I sent you all two, two zip files. Okay. So I've, I've re recorded. Um, okay. So uh, if, yeah, if anyone else, just as a general statement, if anyone does have any problems, um, we do have these breakout rooms uh, that we're setting up to, to give individual people uh, help. Um, we'll be making much more use of this as the, the course progresses and we start making things more interactive. So, um, so yesterday via email, uh, you should have received two, uh, two zip files, one with the one called Brussellator and one called Morris the car. If you can, on whatever system you're, you're using, if you can go into the MacCon, whatever version of MacCon you have, and in the systems folder, so if I go here, if you could just unpack them in the systems folder. So you can see if I go into my systems folder here, I have the Brussellator, which I sent you, and the Morris the car somewhere down here. So these need to be in this systems folder, otherwise you won't be able to access them. So in this, in this MacCon GUI window, the, the first of these things on the left, so the select tab, allows us to pick the system. Hello, okay. So um, this then allows us to, allows us to, to load a system and, and to, to, to choose which part, point we start our, our analysis. So if you click on the load and edit systems, it should pop up a little thing called a data browser. And, and in here, you'll probably see a list of, of some other things like Fitzunagumo, Hop Hop Broken, JR Slow. Um, and you may be wondering where these came from. These are just uh, demos that are inbuilt with MacCon. But what we want to do is we want to load the Brussellator system. So if you've unpacked it correctly, and if you, if you click on it, you should, it should come up with a something that looks like this. And you may, and you can see here the equations here, this is precisely what we defined in the, in the, in the course notes. So when you've done that, if you click on the load button, the data browser should disappear. Other things may appear, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, so I've got a little plot here, but I'm going to take that off because I can show you how to get the fucking window up. So you'll you'll get quite familiar over the over the the these at least certainly these first three weeks with with these windows and menus. Loosely speaking, this one is the overall controller, so the MacComp GUI. This is for you know loading data, saving data, controlling what's in on the screen. The starter window here is for setting initial conditions. And, and when we do continuation uh, next week, it'll be choosing uh, what variables, what our variables of interest are. The integrator here um, is for doing the actual simulations. So strictly speaking, when we, when we talk about simulating mathematical models, what we're doing is we're integrating these equations. Um, I don't want to get into the specifics of that nomenclature. But the point is that the integrator is, is the simulator. And this is where you change simulation options. Most of the time, unless your system is poorly behaved, uh, the default options should be good enough. Um, so the other thing I should say is that um, it, in the actual presentation itself, uh, the, what I'm about to do is, it, it, is I do it in little GIFs in the presentation as well. OK. Great. So, I mean, I, don't worry so much if um, 
if, if you can't follow everything directly now, because all of this is, is repeated in the video, and of course this will be recorded as well. Um, not found by Matt Conk. Hmm. Okay, well. Um, so, so if we look in this integrator window here, the only thing that we really need to, to keep track of is the interval here. So this is basically how long is our simulation. Um, and of course, really what you, you'll have to do in terms of looking at specific systems is just, you know, try a few different values until you, until you see which is the correct interval to, to look at. Um, so if we have a look at the information that's, that's here at the minute, we can see that time starts at zero. It's, it's usually a good idea to have time starting at zero, uh, unless there's a good reason not to. Um, X and Y, which are our two variables of interest, uh, these are both set to zero initially. I'm going to set them to one now, just, I mean, just, just because. And then we have our concentrations of A and our concentrations of B. So again, let's, set, let's just set everything to one uh, as a good place to start. We're doing a simulation over 200 time units. And, and then when we hit go, that, shall do, that will do something. But of course, we can't actually see anything yet. So what we're going to do is if we go to the window, and you can see here, this controls what is actually shown on the screen. And if you go into the graphics submenu, you can see here that there's a few options, namely 2D and 3D plot. Um, for what we're going to do now, it, it's sensible to have a 2D plot rather than a 3D plot, even though we've got x, y, and time. So we're just going to go to 2D plot. So if you click on that, it should open another little window, which says plot 2D on it. And so this is really using MATLAB's inbuilt uh, plotting routines. But you should also see that on the far right, there is another little heading that says MATCONT. So here, MATCONT has added a bunch of different functions to help us plot stuff on this graph. So if we click on that, and there's a whole bunch of options here, which we will use at various points. Um, but the main thing to first is to go to layout. So layout just basically tells us what is actually plotted on these axes. So here we've got basically the, two, the same two things repeated, one for the abscissa, one for the ordinate. And time at the moment is plotted uh, on the x-axis. So you can plot three things, the coordinates, so our x and y, our parameters a and b, a bit boring for this one because they're being held constant, or time. And when we're doing initial simulations of our system, it's usually a good idea to have time on the x-axis to begin with. Uh, and across our entire range from 0 to 200. For our coordinates, um, I think, well, well, we'll put x on our coordinate for now. Uh, figuring out what a sensible range for our coordinates is, is again, something that you have to try and try and few values. Of course, our concentrations can't be negative, so 0 is a good lower bound. Uh, as for what a good upper bound is, um, I don't know. I think this, this must be what I, I did last time, so I'm going to leave it there for now. It doesn't matter if you're off a little bit. And then when you click OK, that's now stored the options for this graph. So everything is now set up to go. OK, we'll have to look into that one. OK, so there's a suggestion from Hannah there. Oh, no, so that didn't work. Kyle, sorry to interrupt. You know when you can you hear me okay by the way? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. Um, you know when you set your initial conditions and then you said and then you click go. How do you where's the go? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the go is not in a go. Um it's uh it's in well we're, we're just I'm, I'm just gonna hit go now. Although I'm seeing a lot of people uh Matcon is not finding the actual files. Uh Uh, okay. So I think what we'll do is I'm, I, I will show, um, I will show you how this thing works to everybody. And then I'll, I'll sort of, we'll see if we can come, uh, load on it. can't get any of the windows to load. Okay. And then I'll come and help individual people, um, with getting this system set up. So in terms of, 
uh, in terms of how you actually get it to do something. So if you click on this compute button, you have three options, compute forward, compute backward, compute extend. So compute forward is, is what you'll normally start with. So this is advancing forward uh, now in whatever you've chosen to do. So here we're simulating, which means that we're marching forward in time. Um, you could also march backward in time. Uh, of course, we can't do that yet because zero is before 200. Uh, or you can extend a previously computed solution. So if we go forward, we should see now a line here. So this is our solution to the system. So we've finished the integration according to our control window. So this, this will say things like computing, paused or finished, depending on what the status of the system is. Um, if we click on view results, we can see uh, you know, that it starts at time zero with uh, coordinates x and y and parameters a and b, um, and it finishes at time 200. So, so this tells us that our simulation was successful. Of course, you know, we don't want to spend all of our time looking at numbers. Instead, we can look at a graph, although the graph isn't that much more interesting at this point. So it's essentially just a straight line at one. And what that basically means is that our system uh, is just staying at one. Right? It's not doing anything. So uh, even though we have all of these reactions going on overall, the system is in, is in an equilibrium state. So to make things slightly more interesting, but not that interesting as of yet, we can, we can go into uh, our initial point and just change the initial point. So if we set x and y to be zero, we're now going to start with no x, we're going to start with no y. But of course, x is being produced in a reaction where a essentially turns into x. So even though we start with no x, it will still build up in our system. It's a useful thing to do to clear the plot. So if we go into this into the plot and go to matcon and clear we can clear off that line and now we're set up and we're ready to start the next simulation so if we go again to compute and we go to forward now we can see that there's this little wiggle here right so this is now x starts from zero it builds up maybe i can zoom in a little bit here so it builds up overshoots one a little bit but then settles down so you can see different time scales here and the different time scales that you can see. So you see the slope here is different to the slope here is different to the slope here. These are because of the, the, the rates of reactions of the individual one, two, three, four are all different. So uh, you're, you're seeing sort of different phases of the system evolving. It's useful to also have a check on what Y is doing in this same thing, in the same plot. So again, if we go to layout now, and just change from x being on the y-axis to y being on the y-axis, the plot should update. So we should have y here. And then if you go to matcon and then redraw curve, it'll put the curve on. And so we can see that y has a very, very similar kind of uh, profile. OK. so. So in that, the system is now doing, it's not just sitting at steady state to begin with, but it, you can see it settles down to a steady state pretty quickly, which is you know, quite boring for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a slightly shorter simulation now just to show how to get the system to do something more interesting. So we're going to go for 60. Uh, I guess this could be seconds, so a minute. Uh, again, we'll update the plot. So in layout, again, now instead of going from 0 to 200, we can just go from zero to 60, and that should update the plot pretty quickly here. Just click OK. And the way that we do this is we want to, we want to change the value of, of A or B to induce some kind of qualitative change in the behavior of the system. So we know that for values of A equals 1 and B equals 1, we get this steady state behavior. And you can try a few different values, but I am just going to tell you now that a value of 2.5 should give us something more interesting. So I'm going to put 2.5 in there. So that's now changed the value of, of B in our system. I will clear again the, uh, the curve. And now I'm going to compute again. And we, could, we should see something different happening. OK. 
Okay. So now we've started from the same initial condition of x and y both being zero, but we've changed the parameter b, and now we can see a much, much uh, different kind of solution. So in particular, we can see that y builds up, and at some point, there's so much y in the system uh, that we're kind of losing it all at once, and then we get this big crash here. And then it builds up again, and then it crashes down. Okay. And if we have a look at what x is doing, again, by going back to the layout and having a look at x, and then redrawing, we can see that x has the kind of similar but opposite profile. So x builds up really, really quickly. It gets to some point here, and then we lose it in a reaction with y, and then it sort of decays on a slower time scale. So these are the oscillations that we saw in that reaction. One thing, it is a good thing to do when you see behavior like this is to, to see whether this is just sort of transient behavior. Can you plot X and Y together? So uh, I have not found a direct way in MatCon to get this to work. Uh, maybe Piotr does. You can, we can plot a 3D system. So if I go into uh, graphics 3D here, so now um, I have three different things to put in. So again, I'm gonna put time on the x-axis from zero to 60. Uh, I'll put x on the y-axis. That's confusing, it's quite ordinate. Uh, so let's go from yeah, three point, yeah, just three. And then y on this one from zero to four. So if I redraw that, oh, wow. now we can see this oscillation. Um, you can see this oscillation now in the two coordinates. So they both start from zero, uh, and we can see that x builds up, uh, quite, sorry, y builds up quite quickly, and then we enter this loop. Okay, so this is, really, this is really the oscillation now. It's really this repeating structure. And so we might want to just check that that persists over time. So of course, the way to do that is to extend our interval here. So let's go back to 200, or let's do 400, I guess. Yeah, 400. And you export output to plot in R. Uh, you mean the numerical output? Yes, so, so all of the numerical output is, is controlled. Uh, well, it's actually in, uh, if you go into the system or even this result file. Okay, so you can export data from here for each of the curves that you produce. The other thing to say is that the way it's set up um, in MatCon is that uh, every time you generate a curve, it will save it as something. The, the naming convention might not make sense to you yet, but I think over the, the course of the three weeks, it will become clearer. So what we're generating here is we're generating orbits from a point, so point orbit, PO. These will be saved. So if you do something and you think, oh, that looks interesting, but you forget about it uh, and you want to come back to it, it will be saved. So you can go back to it, load it in MatCon or export it from there. Um, you know, the whole point is that uh, it, it keeps track of everything, everything you do. Uh, so now let's just check that this persists. So we want to also make sure that our graphs are extended. Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to, I'll just extend this graph for now, and then I can show you how you can fit it uh, later. So let's see what we're going, 400. Okay, so you can see that our graph is terminated here because we only simulated up to 60 before. But now in our integrator, we told it to go up to 400 time units. So now if we go into compute, remember that we've already got the solution up to t equals 60. So if we click on extend now, it will just restart from there. And so you can see it started drawing here already. And this will take a little bit of time to, um, to go around. So in the control window here, you can see that it's computing. And of course, you can see it's computing because the, uh, the line is moving here. If for whatever reason your plot's gone off the page, this will tell you uh, where it is, where it is you are in the computation. I might not let this run all the way to 400. I might stop it um, in a second. Because it, okay. I mean, hopefully the point of this is that these oscillations persist and I hope that you can see that. Um, I'll let it get to 200 and then I'll stop it. Okay, that's about 200, I think. 
Um, so now when I push pause here, you can see that it's paused uh, and I can either carry on from where I left off or I can stop. In this instance, I think I'm going to stop and it'll say finished. If I come onto this plot here, so you see this plot didn't update um, because I haven't told it to update the axes yet. But if I go into MatCon here, uh, when this zoom thing disappears, uh, if I hit fit range, that will automatically update the, um, the, the plotting axis to show the, the full solution. Okay, so, so that is a, a brief overview of how you simulate things in MatCon. Um, I will go and have a check round with, with everybody in a second who, who said that they were having issues getting it to work. Um, oh, yeah, there's one thing, one final thing, which is saving the figure. If for whatever reason you want to save the figure to come back to, you can do this um, in the file heading of, the, um, of the, the figure that you want to save. If you just click Save As, so this will by default save it in, in the systems folder um, or whichever folder you ran MatConf from. So you can save it as a whole bunch of different formats. So I like to save them as EPS files so that I can edit them later. MATLAB has its own style, matlab.fig, which means that you can edit it within MATLAB's editor. Uh, but it also has a whole bunch of other things. Um, so classic uh, sort of bitmaps like PNG or TIFF. But I'll just save it as an EPS now and I'll save it as uh, Bresselator oscillation. I can spell. So I save that. And if I go to the folder in here, which is where. So you can see that this has appeared, and I can open this, and uh, I think we'll be saved. OK, so for those of you that do um, have the systems working, uh, you can have a look at the, the Morris Lacar system. So Morris Lacar system is a completely different kind of, of system. This is a system uh, that describes a, a neuron. It's actually a model of a barnacle muscle fiber, which you can stimulate electrically. And then it, you can see these, this nice uh, rhythmic electrical activity. Um, I've given you. A, a file which has the Morris Lacar encoded. So if you can change the values of the um, of the parameters in the initial point to the ones displayed on the screen, you can explore what happens in the system as you change the value of i. So i here represents a, a current that the experimenter is applying to the barnacle muscle fiber. So it's something under direct experimental control. And as you change i, you should be able to see different kinds of behavior in the system. So next week, Krazy is going to talk through a little bit more about how you do neural modeling in a simplified version of this model. Um, and we're going to use that to showcase the, the sort of the main feature of MatCon, which is, a, which is its ability to predict the behavior of systems based on the parameters of that same system. If I can say a few words. Uh, so next week, we will actually type our equations because it's a simple system and it's it's feasible to do within the, the the environment that we are in now you can imagine the more complicated system the more mistakes one makes and the more settings needs to be set before you can run it so you you have been given now these pre-coded systems by kyle but next week because the system that we are, that is simpler we will actually create it in matcont starting from the beginning with typing in the equations and then uh, choosing, uh, yeah, uh, setting the parameters and then simulating, just revisiting what, what you've done now. So don't worry if you haven't been able to, uh, to, to get these simulations to work. We'll do some more of this next week. Um, we'll start with that and then we will move on to the bifurcation analysis capability of MatCont where we can summarize the behavior of the system as parameter changes. So um, don't give up, basically. It's, uh, it takes some time to get used to softwares and uh, to modeling, but uh, then it can be real fun. Good. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. So, um, so I, I will send around uh, this presentation, which has, the, uh, which has these two little bits at the end about the Morris the car. 
and, and, and variation of, of this parameter i. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to try and figure out how why MatCon is not reading in these systems for the people who can't get it loaded. But I will send this round. If, if you guys want to have a look at um, you know uh, going through the stuff that we've done today, all the most of the car model, that's great. Otherwise, um, uh, don't worry because a lot of this will be repeated next week uh, with a view to extending it uh, to the bifurcation now. Okay, but uh, are, there, are there any more questions that are uh, yes? Any more general questions about modeling or or MatCont or or anything like that um, before we end today's session? Um, I have a question, if that's all right. So, yeah. Kyle, you gave us um, some files which had all the stuff that we needed there, and it was all lovely to get going. But say if you wanted to model a system and you are aware that someone somewhere has coded it already, do you have to have the code format to put it into MatCont? Or how, basically, how did you get these nice um, files that you gave us? <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's a good question. Um, I guess the, the, the thing I would say is that um, across the dynamical systems community, um, you know, or modelers, if you like, um, there is kind of no standard way to do things, which, which makes answering sort of that question a, a, a sort of a bit um, sad in a way that if you see that someone has done a nice model and, and you want to, to try it out and, and explore its behavior, um, Part of that will involve translating what they wrote into something that MatCon can read. Um, ne next week, we're going to talk much more about how you would actually go about doing that. And in actual fact, you should see that it is quite straightforward. So if I, if I just very quickly go back to, um, where is it? Well, I'll just do it in MatCon actually, it's easier. So if I, um, so can you still see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so here is the the brusselator. So I, I just made this file uh, uh, brusselator. Um, it will ask you what you want to call time. T is is usually the thing. You 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 define what your state variables are. So here x and y. You define what your parameters are, and you can see here where it says equations. This thing that I've typed out. That is literally all I typed. So it's it's not really that complicated. Um, so even though. Uh, I've sent you like quite a few different files. This is really the only one that you need to get going. And effectively, if you if you read papers or or if people have published it, um, you know, elsewhere in, in XML or something, really just it's just translating those equations and, and just typing them in this this MatCon interface. So it's not too hard, although as Krazy says, sometimes uh, well, it's very very easy to make transcribing errors when you go from one to the other. Uh, which is, yeah, not so, not not always easy. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, well, I think that then it's probably a good time to to draw this first workshop to a close. Um, again, please do email us if uh, if if you want if you have any questions or or uh, you need some help. Uh, with getting MatCon to find the systems, uh, and and just again to 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 point you in the direction of the survey that we sent out. Uh, next week it will be the same time, uh, and uh, Piotr, Krazy, and I will all be here, but Krazy will be leading the session. <laughs>